not everyone was here. So let's just very quickly rehearse this whole idea of cryptography and then connect it back to maths a little bit because we just kind of jumped in without talking about it. Okay? So we'll look at this word and we recall that there's an adjective that we use that comes from the same word, right? What was the adjective? Cryptic. Cryptic, right, which means, which means mysterious, okay? So the idea of something being unclear, not sure what it means, okay? And so the verbs that go along with that, right, are, well, to make something cryptic is to encrypt it, right? So the process of doing that is encryption. The opposite of encryption, or to encrypt something, is to decrypt it, okay? And these, these pairs of words are very closely related to the word cipher. So you can encipher something, which is the same as encryption, or you can decipher it. Same idea. Okay. So then we had a look at a cipher. We had a look at a very famous one. What was it? It was the Caesar cipher, right? The Caesar cipher, and it used two simple kinds of maps, right? How did the Caesar cipher work? What was the first thing that you did? You took all letters, you made them as numbers, and then what did you do to those numbers? You shifted them, you just add something, right? So you add, you take some constant, you add it to all of them, and then we did a second thing to make sure you got a letter out the other end. What was the second thing? What was the second field of maths that we used? Started with an M? Mod modular arithmetic, right? So the idea of taking a remainder, okay? So you add things on, you add things on, but then you would uh, divide by 26 and find the remainder so that you got a letter, okay? But then we saw the Caesar cipher had this critical, critical weakness, right? Not only were there, you know, one letter words, of which there are not many, okay? What was the main weakness that we found? Okay, so... We did see that spaces are a problem, but more of a problem than spaces were that in normal English and in other languages, it's the same just for in a different distribution. Um, the main weakness right, is the frequency of letters, right? Letter frequency. Because in normal English, and you can even see it on the words that are on the board right now, okay? In normal English, some letters are far more common than others. Yes? Yeah, main weakness. Okay. So does that make sense? Okay. So this was the main weakness, right? Now what I'm going to yeah, question? Main weakness linked to frequency. Do you remember yesterday's lesson? Can someone help him out? Why why is letter frequency? Why is that a weakness? Why is that a problem? Yeah. Good, fantastic. So let me repeat that because that's exactly right. You can even have a look on the board, right? For instance, far and away the most common letter on the on the board is E. You know, there, 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 uh, there, 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 and there again, and there again. And did I miss some? Uh, a weakness has two. Cipher has. Oh, sorry. There's two there. There you go. Okay. So look. There are E's in almost every word, and some words you double up, right? So if I were to take this whole board and you apply the Caesar cipher to it, right? Here's the problem. All the E's will become some other letter, but it'll be the same letter every time. So it might turn into a T. And then you can have T's everywhere, and you can make an educated guess, and you can crack the cipher. You can break it. Okay? So we have two solutions to this problem. Okay, so this is where we're now breaking into newer ground, right? We looked at this yesterday. Two solutions to this main weakness, okay? Um, I'll tell you the first one first. It's more detailed and we're gonna spend more time on it next week. The first technique, the first solution is to see this, see this, adding division and remainders. They're really easy. The maths of these is very simple, okay? Which is part of why it's so easy to break. So one of the solutions is to use more complicated maths, right? If you do like weird functions like exponentials and trig functions or bring in complex numbers or something crazy like that, you can use more complicated maths than this and so what you'll end up with is more complex and hard to break. Okay? So there's the first solution. We're going to look a bit at an example of that or a few examples of that next week. 
But there's a simpler way. It's a much simpler way, and it's what we're going to focus on today. Right? The problem with this is that because you're adding the same number to every letter, that's why all the E's will turn into all the T's, or all the whatever. <laughs> so what if we could fix that? What if we could not shift by a constant each time? Right? So it's still using the idea of addition, and it's still using the same idea of modular and remainders and division. Okay? So it retains the easy maths, which is a good thing, because you're going to be encoding all these long messages. It's, it's not easy for a computer to do. We're still using the same maths, but we're going to make it, and I'm going to show you a method, that if it's used properly, is unbreakable. Like literally unbreakable. It's not an exaggeration. It is, there's a mathematical proof for why this new method I'm about to show you is invulnerable. It cannot be broken. And the method is called a one-time pad. Now, what is a one-time pad? Um, I made one, so I could show you. In fact, as we're very important in a second, um, I made two. Let's see why? Here is a one-time pad. Can you all see it? I tried to make sure the numbers were big enough so that you could vaguely see what was going on here. Okay. So here's a one-time pad, and I have two of them, exact copies. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've got one, and I'm going to hand the other one to Brendan. Okay. So now he and I have copies identical of the same one-time pad. Uh, you can read the numbers across the top, right? You've got 8, 19, 13, 4, 23, and so on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, the way a one-time pad works is, the same principle as this Caesar cipher, which is shifting letters along. Okay? So the same principle, I'm still shifting letters. Okay? But this time, instead of adding the same number, same number, same number to all of the characters, I'm going to add different numbers every single time. Okay? So suppose I have a five letter word. Okay? Let's actually try and do this. Um, we'll see if we can help each other out here. Um, if I wanted to send a five letter word, like say, it's a five letter word guys. Happy. Happy. That's a good example actually, and you'll see why in a second. right? If I wanted to send the word happy, the first thing I do is I've got to convert them all to numbers. Okay? So help me out. I happen to know that that's eight and that's one. What would the letter P be? A, B, C, D. <laughs> Surely we wrote this down. Didn't go back to yesterday's work, oh, didn't we? 16. 16? Okay. So this will be 16. This will also be 16. And why will it be 25? Because it's the second last letter. Okay. So then what I will do is I'll say, okay, I've got my one time pad, right? And for the first letter, I'm going to add the first number, 8, right? So this is going to become plus 8, which is 16. Okay. Then I move over to the next one. I've got 19 there, so I should add 19 to this. Okay, so it'll become 20. Uh, what am I going to add to this? 13. So this is going to become, okay, now we need our modular arithmetic, don't we? Right? So this will become 29, but that should really be 3, shouldn't it? Okay, mod 26, because 29 is not really equal to 3. It's only equal to 3 when you take mod 26. Um, okay, now the next letter is still a 16, but I've moved over to the next one. I've moved over to a 4 now. So I'm going to add 4, so that'll be 20. And then my last one, 23, that's a big one. So that's going to be 48, which is the same as 22 mod 26. Is that okay? Right. So what am I actually going to transmit? What do these letters correspond to? Well, just by coincidence, we've got 16 here. So I know that's going to be a new color. That's going to be a P. OK. What's 20? T. T? Oh, wait, hold on. T, yes? OK. Um, 3, that'll be a C. Um, I've got to send a T again. And then 22, T, U, V. V? OK. So this is what I'm going to send now. P, T, C, T, V. Okay, now can you see why, despite its simplicity, right, why this is so superior and why it's unbreakable? You see what's going on? Look at this. See this T and this T? They don't even represent the same letter in the original, right? This T came from an A, and this T came from a P, right? And in exactly the same way, I had a repeat letter here but they didn't become repeat letters later on. 
So now if you come back to this and I look at all of my E's, which come up so many times, almost certainly every one of these E's will become, after it's enciphered, right, will become a different letter. So you can't do this letter frequency thing. It's all going to be completely jumbled up. So that's how I encode it. Okay? And what I would do is we could say, as the name suggests, one time pad, right? I never want to use this pad again, right? I'm going to say, oh, look, I've, I've used these five already. Okay, if I wanted to continue the message, I would keep going. When I get to the end of this page, I tear it off, I destroy it, and I never see it again. And then I keep going. Okay, yep. Okay, so why is this better than the Caesar cipher? Okay, no obvious patterns will emerge unlike here. Okay, so now Brendan receives my message. Okay, and because he's in possession of the exact same one time pad that I have, he can go through and he can start with the first letter and he can, well, I added, right? So what should he do? He should subtract. Okay, so he's going to convert these all into numbers, so he'll get this. Then he's going to subtract, and again, he'll have to do mod 26, right? So for instance, you know, this three, this three, this is a tricky one, because you're like, oh, he will subtract the third number, which is 13, right? So three minus 13 is negative 10. Ah, but when you do mod 26, that's gonna be the same as 16, right? Because these are 26 letters apart, can you see that? So they're really the same letter, okay? And he will get back the P. Then I started. Okay. So this is a way to securely transmit things between Brendan and I. Okay. And it's unbreakable. Here's the point. Like even if you intercept this message, right? If you don't have the same one-time pad that I have and Brendan has, you have no chance. No chance. Okay. So sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Right? 